All right. Um, so I'm going to be talking about uh, distributed identity uh, and, and bearer tokens and nets. Um, you, it, some of this stuff may, may sound a little bit familiar. I think Ari talked about some of it earlier. Um, my, the angle that I have, uh, you know, on my discussion is a little bit different. Um, so I've been using NATS. Uh, so I'm the founder of Provide, which is a, um, uh, an orchestration platform for peer-to-peer for, um, for -peer networks. Um, and so it's a low code um, distributed systems um, application development platform. Uh, it's enterprise focused. Um, it's really got a, uh, a lot of blockchain. <laughs> we, we're, we're really in the blockchain space. And um, we, I, we've been using NATS uh, for um, sort of a backplane for all of our, you know, a fault tolerant backplane for, um, for really everything on the platform. But uh, we've started to see like some opportunities to use it, um, you know, in new ways. And so some of our, some of the organizations we've been working with uh, in the blockchain space have, we're, we're really looking for, um, for a way to do, uh, do uh, decentralized private and secure messaging. And it's just, NATS is an excellent fit. So the motivations are around the, you know, this bear off, uh, bear token stuff um, is really like to, to um, maintain a very high level and extensible level of uh, decentralization that really had to pass the sniff test for the blockchain community. Um, the blockchain community is, you know, is very, is very much um, uh, on the peer-to-peer -peer decentralization movement. And so NATS is um, a really great tool for that. Uh, other motivations, uh, we wanted to keep things very, uh, very simple. Uh, we wanted, uh, from an ops perspective, we wanted to be able to reduce complexity and cost around uh, deploying uh, not, not just um, NATS, you know, re really new environments when an organization wants to, um, to essentially come onto the to um to the net to, to the network, uh, spinning up a new net server, uh, you know, really really needs to be straightforward, uh, and then you know that organization can then uh, delegate author you know authorization using bearer tokens. Um, so uh, we see this as um, kind of enabler an enabler for next gen uh, business process automation, um, and you know one of the use cases that we're we're starting to bake into one of the products that we're working on currently. Uh, which, I'll, which I'll get to later, uh, is, is point to point inter uh, enterprise data transfer. Um, so we really didn't, a lot of messaging uh, message brokers, you know, have, have or are used, even NATS in some cases, are used in sort of a centralized model. Um, our requirements are obviously no, no central authority. We wanted to allow organizations to be self sovereign and act, or act in a self sovereign way. Um, to really sign uh, to, to sign permission uh, bearer tokens to delegate uh, authorization uh, to, to users of the system, um, and we really saw like an, an ephemeral user model um, versus um, a traditional NATS the traditional NATS user model uh, to be uh, of high value. Essentially, uh, the, this ephemeral user model, if the token is signed or is verified, um, an ephemeral user is created in memory. Uh, for the duration of the connection. Uh, we wanted to support RS-256 and ED-25519 uh, signing and verification. Um, and we, we didn't want to depend on NSC for generating key material. Uh, not that NSC is not an amazing tool, which is quite, quite awesome. Um, again, this goes back to our, our motivation of, of really keeping costs down um, in terms of, or complexity lo as low as possible um, with, with new infrastructure. Um, and so that sort of uh, goes hand in hand with um, not, not requiring any uh, configuration of operators, users, or accounts. Um, and so I guess just, I'm sure everyone probably knows, knows what a bearer JWT is, but it's quite, it's quite great because they're, you know, sort of ubiquitous at this point, highly extensible. Um, and just for, so for some quick anatomy, uh, there's a header, payload, and signature uh, that, that sort of make up a bearer token. Um, the fields that we sort of care about are the expiration, the EXP header, which is the expiration timestamp. Um, that server actually will set a timeout um, given this header, and um, the connection is still around when, when that timestamp is uh, when when the expiration occurs, then the connection will be will be dropped. Um, the ALG, ALG header 
uh, which sort of uh, points at, hey, what, uh, what's, uh, what algorithm was used for signing the token um, in the KID header, um, which is the key ID. So if you have multiple keys that, that were used, uh, that, are, that were used for signing, uh, you can figure out which one to use for verification. Those are the headers we care about. Uh, the NAS permission claim um, has been talked about uh, by many folks. Uh, it's, just, it's just the NAS permission, permissions model. Um, essentially, the bearer token we're signing, uh, signing publish, subscribe, and allow responses um, keys or claims rather. Um, and if the, if the token is valid or if the signature is valid um, upon connect, then those permissions are applied to the in, uh, in memory user. So, so here's the permissions model. Um, it's, it's quite it's quite straightforward. You are able to uh, to provide um, essentially a list of published subjects, subscribed subjects that are allowed for the connection. Um, allow responses. Uh, you can set it to true, set it to false. It's just false by, de false by default. What's cool about the extensibility of the JWT is it really fits well into the context of other applications. Like if you um, if you generate and sign a JWT um, that has other application permissions, um, you know this is Nat's claim fits you know very nicely in line with a single token, um, and so you can really it's quite extensible. And so for that reason, it, it's work, it works well. Um, so I guess, you know, I'm going to show a demo of, of how this works, but, um, what I'm, what, what I'm just, just sort of summarize where, like where we're at, um, we're talking about, uh, allowing organizations to use, use RS-256-E25519 to sign tokens, uh, without actually modifying or configuring the NAT server beyond setting an environment variable. Um, and I'll, and I'll show that, um, here, here momentarily. What is, what that means is, um, you know, or what, what caveats, you know, sort of go hand in hand with that. Um, it's other, other, uh, other configuration schemes uh, may be in play. Uh, the one way we're, um, we're sort of supporting and the, the use case we had was we were using that streaming. Um, so we still support the auth token parameter if that's provided, if, if like, if, if a connection comes in to NAT, the NAT server, uh, and no, uh, bear JWT is provided. Um, but it, you know, an auth token is provided, uh, then that will still be honored. Um, so that's like our NAT streaming server is using that is using the auth token still. Um, ideally, though, you know, um, we see the you know the NAT server or the NAT streaming and it, it really the jet stream support um, being configured with this this bear model as well. Uh, so here's here let me get into this a, a little bit of the code and how this works. Um, so essentially, when uh, configure authorization is called in the NAT server, um, there's this bearer auth factory um, that's, that's called, and the bearer auth factory it looks to see if there um, if there's essentially any any verification tokens, which uh, or any JWT uh, keys that are that can be used for verification, um, and those keys are read. And currently, it's you know it's just being set with an environment variable. Um, you know, looking to you know see how we can roll this together uh, with it with the Enkeys library. Um, thanks to Derek and, and the team, uh, you know, for working with me on that. Um, it's been it's been a pleasure. Uh, so basically, if this if this token is is uh, is present, then then you can. Authorize the request. Another requirement we had was uh, was we needed web sockets uh, as well, sort of out of the box. And so we've rolled together in this in this um, in a branch, really at a fork that we have of NAT server. We've rolled together um, this sort of in memory ephemeral user, um, which actually gets um, in the authorization check here that the user, if the um, if the claims of the token. So so essentially what we're doing here is we're we're saying, hey, does this token um, does this token have a valid key, or is, is this token is this token signed properly? Can we verify it? And if we if we can, then we read the NAT claim, and we essentially uh, we set we we register an ephemeral user here with the, with the permissions that were uh, found in the claim. Um, and if you know if, if no if no claim was present, it, you know the, the request fails. So for example. So this is a uh, this is a uh, an example where we're hitting using actually a WebSocket 
request to hit the NAT server. Uh, with, with, we're actually, our fork of the NAT server is running an embedded WebSocket server, similarly to how the WebSocket server will be officially supported in, in that shortly. Um, it, it, we wanted, you know, our, our users of our of this, you know, of this fork needed uh, browser support right away, so um, we baked that in. Um, when it's officially supported, we shouldn't have to change anything. So when when you when we, like we send this um, this WebSocket request with a bear token, the bear token looks similar to what we just saw recently in the slide right here, and then you'll see. In our log, um, we essentially get this. We're registering this ephemeral user, and we, we're enforcing the authorized expiration that was in the token. Um, and essentially, like now, I can I can send requests uh, or I can subscribe to um, to these subjects um, without any configuration um, of uh, you know of users, operators, uh, etc. Um, so. Use in production. Look, look, so there's a couple of organizations uh, provided provide is using this in production. Connect uh, is an organization that um, is, is the layer two state channels, um, essentially a payments uh, solution on the Ethereum blockchain. Um, let's do this. Let's run a let's run a local environment uh, of of the of the provide stack. And I will show you um, the shuttle project, which is uh, something that's using using this WebSocket service, as, uh, this um, this fork of the NAT server as well. Wait for a second for this these services to go online. Oh, also we'll need a mass streaming server. So you see NAT streaming is still using this auth token, uh, as I mentioned, uh, and it's, it, it will be, uh, it's honored. Um, fail to, fall, uh, to parse their authorization, attempting fallback authorization, and then uh, because um, the token, the, the auth token is supported, uh, the streaming server is able to connect. All right, so our our, um, our services should be online momentarily. So, uh, well, so this is shuttle. This is not in production yet, but it's getting close. Uh, it it leverages the platform. It leverages the, the bear uh, the bearer off stuff. Uh, if we look at the the web sockets, we can see um, we can see that that, that Nats. So I think the, I forget what the official port will be uh, when web sockets is released in the coming weeks, but uh, you see here we're using WebSocket connection. We just defaulted to 4221. Seems seems reasonable. Um, and so what, what this work what this does is it allows you to um, to sort of it's sort of the easy button for um, for uh, creating new new projects, uh, new baseline projects, which um, uh, are are essentially um, so the baseline protocol is a, is a um, an up and coming enterprise protocol that is uh, sort of bringing zero knowledge proofs to the enterprise and making the public blockchain accessible for enterprise. Um, and so we're, we use the provide platform to uh, to orchestrate, um, you know, to or to make it sort of the, sort of the easy button for uh, deploying new projects. Um, and so it's it, it's it's pretty exciting. So I, I won't go through the entire the entire process. Uh, all this is this uses NAS behind the scenes. I, the reason I can't go through this process is because I don't want to put my creds in. Um, after, like essentially, once you create a new project, I would name that NAS Connect, and I would I would get um, this this new this new environment, and we we essentially get this new infrastructure for the organization that spun up the project. Now you see one of the one of the um, one of the uh, pieces of infrastructure that was stood up is actually a NAS server. Uh, it, it shouldn't say HTTPS, whatever. Um, but you see here, like this is the this is where the point-to-point -point messaging comes in. Um, like if I go to invite another organization, uh, so like let's say there's some business process that needs, um, you know, close collaboration between external parties, or two. Like let's say it's you know, uh, 
medical supplier. Uh, so when they get invited, when that organization gets invited, um, the Vicki Hellman Key Exchange will be performed between the organizations and this bear this bear authorization uh, model can be used when like when that second organization accepts the invitation they will uh, you, they'll get all the, the infrastructure provision under their um, under their AWS or Azure account and they, and you know their NAT server will be um, will be in the network and it will be able to establish point to point communication uh, with with the, with our NAT server um, and using this delegated authorization model. Uh, it, it, like it really uh, creates a, a whole lot of new opportunities uh, to do sort of, you know, on top of the zero knowledge um, sort of business process automation, uh, you know, it, it's, it creates a way to do secure file transfer. Uh, it's, it's a very exciting, um, it's very exciting stuff. So uh, we have a PR, there's a PR that, that was put together. You can check out um, on NATS for NATS server that shows this, this bear authorization in, in play um and there's a, like there's a uh, there's a fork uh in my github repo uh or under my github account there's a docker there's a docker image you could use there's also as a result of this effort um a, a utility called ps and util uh it's a typescript uh, uh package that you can use to essentially um you can just initialize it uh with with like a with just like a config and it'll decide whether it should use nats or nats websocket just based on the url so that's that's kind of nifty um check that out if you're interested uh it's it's uh it, it uses uh um it uses yet another fork of the um of the of the nats of the official nats ws library um but it that that will be consolidated with uh you know the official release once it's once it's ready. Um, so yeah, that, that, that'll be cool. I'll I'll um I'll share these slides uh, for everyone in the Nats um, in the Nats Slack. So if anyone has questions or wants to connect after the fact and learn more about uh, about how this is, is, is all is all put together, uh, I'd be happy to to do that. Thanks, Kyle. Kyle's doing some really neat stuff with. Nats and blockchain, and, and I've been privy to some good conversations with them, and it's really fascinating stuff. So I encourage you to to reach out to them. And what what I found, uh, at least from my perspective, and Kyle, you know, you can can chime in and correct me if I'm wrong, is that you know what Kyle was trying to do was a valid use case that wasn't aligning with where we were at the time in terms of strict use of bearer tokens, and um, we figured out a way to to work together and I said, look, I said, you know, with leaf nodes, you can run your own servers for endpoints using the bearer tokens. Don't wait on us, run ahead. And then we will try to do the hard work to catch up to you. Um, and, and so I think, you know, nothing's ever perfect. So I'm not trying to say that, but I was really impressed with how we, we figured out a way to work together from an ecosystem standpoint. And now again, it's back on us now to try to catch up to the, some of the stuff that Kyle was, was racing ahead with valid use cases in, in his project. Um, to get something where he doesn't have to necessarily maintain a fork. But, um, you know, sometimes fork is called the, the F word in open source. But I think in this thing, we saw that it's actually very valuable. And the fact that the NATS uh, systems with those leaf node technologies allow, you know, that mixing and matching of operator and security models, right, that we talked about earlier, this was a great case where it made the most sense to, to do that. And then we'll, we'll try to do the, the hard work to catch up. But thank you, Kyle, for presenting. Really, really cool stuff. I, like I said, I suggest people reach out to him because there's a lot more uh, to what he's working on uh, than, than we covered here. But thank you. I appreciate sure. it. Sure.